Welcome to Voice Rising with Cara Johnstad. Enjoy weekly conversations with leading luminaries, pioneering visionaries, singers, poets, musicians, and sound healers as we explore the profound role our voice plays on the path to self-realization and global enlightenment. The internationally acclaimed singer, composer, author, healer, recording artist, voice expert, creator of Voice Your Essence, and founder of the School of Voice, Kara Johnstad uses her extraordinary spiritual gifts to empower others. Everything in this world vibrates. Everything has a frequency. A pioneer in the field of voice work and transformational songwriting. Her breakthrough methods are helping thousands of people worldwide fine-tune their body-mind-spirit system and unlock the energetic frequencies of limitless creativity, health, and abundance. Share your voice. Ask your questions. Join in the conversation. Receive life-changing, positive transformation and rise together to create a sound world. And here's your host, Kara Johnstad. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Voice Rising. Today, I have a very special guest with me in studio. Her journey with voice began in her 20s while in a voice workshop. She found herself wondrously introduced to the full potential of her singing voice. And as the range of her voice expanded, so did her life. And the stage fear that had permeated her identity up until that point gradually dissolved. She has gone on to become a renowned singer, songwriter, performer, community song leader, author of the book, The Full Voice, The Art and Practice of Vocal Presence. And she travels between the worlds of work, music, personal development, and community. I warmly welcome Barbara McAfee to the show today. Hello, welcome. Welcome well, to myself. Yeah. <laughs> I feel welcome. <laughs> welcome, Barbara. Um, yeah, everybody has a story about their voice. Your whole life basically revolves around your voice. And I guess, to be honest, all of us, we, we are leading with our voices. And each story is heroic and heartbreaking and complicated and has this crazy mix from personal history, culture, family dynamics, region, character, habits. What is the story about your voice? From oh, it, you are absolutely right. It, it is a saga for everyone. Um, and I often start that quest, all of my work with that question, what is your story about your voice? And my goodness, everybody's got I, 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 not just one, but hundreds. Um, so I will not give you all of mine. <laughs> just so we have time <laughs> to talk about something else. But uh, I, it's a lost and found story like many of us. I, I grew up in a very artistic singing environment. My grandfather was on the radio in Des Moines, Iowa, when my mom mm. was growing up. He had a beautiful voice and directed choirs at his church and in his community. And um, and then my mother was a soloist uh, as a young woman and always was singing around the house. And my older brother was in a band when that was a thing and mm -hmm. made a record, which wow. was a really big thing back in the day. And yeah. so I had good, really good choirs, at both at school and church. So there was a lot of support for, for singing and for my voice. And I was a theater geek in high school. But I had a lot of um, fear about mm -hmm. singing in front of anybody ever, ever, ever. And I didn't understand what that was about, you know, with all the support. Um, yeah. And then I also had um, a lot of illness. I had a lot of uh, chronic tonsillitis as a kid. Mm. I would I'd get a little worn down and the infection that was always in my tonsils would wake up and put me on flat on my back with a 102 degree fever. Um, yeah. So I could never quite get purchase under my voice, even though I was getting some good teaching. I was always sick, so I'd get interrupted. Mm -hmm. And so finally, in my early 20s, they took out my my um, Tonsils, and then I started singing jazz in clubs for the first time. So it was kind of, it's like, oh, we got that out of the way. 
Um, so I started singing jazz. I loved the music. I had a good friend who's a pianist um, who kind of was the first person who got me to open my mouth in that way. But the, the fear, as you mentioned in my intro, was debilitating and just, oh, it took all the pleasure out of it, you know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And a smarter person might have quit. But I kept going because there was something there, you know, something. Um, then I stopped for a while. And then I had another surgery on my throat. I, I got a nodule. It was not cancerous on my thyroid because all the energy that was moving Wow. But I got moving with singing, had to go somewhere once I stopped. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so it all, so they cut my throat and took out that my... That is fascinating. You're like, you have a, you're like a yeah. warrior, like a song I, warrior. You, 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 yeah, that is fascinating. Yeah, so and the my, thyroid I, is really the butterfly, right? So it's it such really is. transformation. It really is. And, and it was a very successful intervention. I don't have any meds. I woke up the other half with all mm-hmm. kinds of alternatives. And I call it my Isaac moment, you know, when in the Bible, in the Old Testament, Abraham puts his son on the, on the altar, which I think is a horrible story. But that's another, that's a whole other conversation. Yeah. But, but it was like putting my most precious thing um, uh, as a possible sacrifice, because the only besides just surgery risks, the only real risk was that they nick my laryngeal nerve and I would be hoarse. Yeah. And that's what happened to Julie, Julie Andrews. And, and when I woke up and still had my voice, I made some vows never to stop again. And I haven't. I had yeah. an operation two years ago and they wanted mm. to intubate. And I said, no, <laughs> Mm, crazy and mm. they now now what a lot of people don't realize they do have these things called laryngeal masks i'm not sure if that'd be possible with a thyroid operation but it's fascinating that they are able to operate now Mm. without going through the cords but it's very it's very scary as someone who it's it's very scary so that was a very deep surrender moment for you it was it was, and I had a, a lot of, point. I did a lot of work after that, you know, just a lot of um, healing. Still a lot. It was a lot of healing work there. And, and, you know, the, eventually when I uh, found my teachers from the Roy Hart Center in the south of France, mm-hmm. you know, who work with this expanded range vocal approach, that's when I really got set free um, to, move the voice past all the trying to fit in and blend in and be perfect, which you get a lot of in choral singing and classical yes. training. I didn't have a lot of classical training, but enough. And so, you know, just, and with my wonderful little German Midwestern, German Scots Irish Midwestern personality, um, that perfectionism was debilitating. And yes, and to just set the voice free past speaking and singing into the realm of sound was incredibly liberating because a lot of the sounds I was making were intense. They were very shadowy, you know, a lot of mm-hmm. like screaming or growling or all the things you're never supposed to do. Um, and I found them very beautiful, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. a little ugly and beautiful at the same time. And incredibly liberating, and uh, it kind of blew the doors off who I thought I was. You know, I thought mm. my voice was this way, and and my personality was that way. And what I discovered was that was all just fabricated. <laughs> you yeah. know, that there was outside of that little tiny story, there was a whole world of truth about who I was um, that I wasn't allowing, and. It Many facets, the door. right? Yeah, wow. and as yeah. you know, you know, you change the voice, and the life goes with it. Yes, yeah. I want yeah. to share with our listeners some of your music. You mm-hmm. write for—I mean, you write songs. You also have a, a community of singers that mm-hmm. sing uh, songs that are either your own beautiful words or their words inspired by great poets sometimes um Mm -hmm. we're gonna start with the song called such as these would you like to share a couple of words about this oh 
Yes, I love, I'm very proud of this song. Um, and uh, it's an honor of all the people who do the thankless underpaid work in the world. So mm-hmm. I, before we talked about what essential workers was were. Mm-hmm. Um, and I met all of this, the people who are mentioned in the song on one business trip to Chicago, Illinois. Mm-hmm. And starting with a woman cleaning a bathroom in the airport, a security guard at the Harold Washington Library, and a guy playing saxophone on the street, um, who I think probably was didn't have didn't have a a, how, a home. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it was a tribute to all of them, and then all the people like them in the world. All the people that actually are so important to make sure that everything runs Mm -hmm. like it does. Keep the lights on, yeah. Yeah, keep the lights on. Let's listen, such as these... singing gospel tunes Makes a fine cathedral from that hollow room His eyes on the sparrow She's singing true Singing sister I hope he keeps his eye on you He's got a kind word He's a guardian angel in a tough disguise And when I tell him so I see joy in his eyes And life is made lovely by such as these By such as made lovely such as these by Barbara McAfee who's with me today in studio. Barbara we were talking a little bit about um, I I guess about you receiving so much uh, support in in many ways as a as a child with being in a musical environment and choirs and at the same time you do talk 
about this debilitating stage fright and fear is such a blocker to so many things. How did you work with that stage fright? How did you, you know, what are some tips and tools that that you went through to face those obstacles and really come into your own full potential? And when you work with clients, how do you go about supporting them to to let go of the fear and to step into their true potential? Well, everybody wants the quick fix. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You've probably seen this too. What's mm-hmm. the magic bullet? And I have to say a lot of it is, is just wearing yourself out, you know, just going in there again and again and again and again and again and again and just realizing you're not actually going to die. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think that's, that's a piece. And then another thing that has helped a lot of people starting with myself is uh, practicing a kind of mindfulness again and again and again, where you say, it's really not about me. It's about what do I want to give? Focusing yeah. on the audience and on what they're what they're interested in, who they are, what matters to them, and that shift over time. If you get curious about who's out there and what matters to them, it seems like it it gets. It, I think the, the the downward spiral is getting really focused on the self. That is, you know, and all the and then the reframe is. The fear is just a part of you trying to protect you. It's like an, uh, I often use the image of a, like an, a watchdog that doesn't know the difference between an intruder and the postal carrier. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's just trying, it means well, that fear means well. It's just trying to keep us safe. So not treating it like an enemy or is stupid, you know, or being mean to it. It's just saying, oh, thank you so much, darling. Now go sit down. Mom is busy. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a different, forming a different kind of relationship with that part of us. Um, But that all of those things I talk about are slow going. They're slow going. But over time, I think it helps. And also just doing your own healing work helps too. Yeah. and, And honoring that the place above our heart, of course, our throat, our lovely throat, is really there to protect us in so many ways when we get all these different signals coming in. And mm-hmm. it has the ability to really shut down. And I often tell people that they're like, they can be princesses and, and kings and queens, that they have their own security guards with them and they can send them to a, down a sandwich coffee break, which, <laughs> which we're, gonna, we're yeah. about to do now, that they have that, yeah, exactly, that they have that exactly. ability to, to go off and give them a, a sandwich somewhere. Um, we're going to take a very short break. And um, be back in just one or two minutes with more from Barbara McAfee. The cutting edge of conscious radio, OM Times Radio, IOM FM. OM Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Connect at ohmtimes.com. Ohm Times, creating a more conscious lifestyle. With happy clients all over the world. Kara Johnstad knows that your voice is the missing link to more authenticity, abundance, creativity, and health. An internationally acclaimed voice expert, Kara's breakthrough methods have helped thousands of people successfully heal their voice wounds and extinguish the story of self doubt and shyness forever. Join in group trainings, attend online sessions, Schedule one-on-one time and invite Kara to work with your organization and community. Get started today. Go to www.karajohnstad.com and receive a special guided meditation designed to fine-tune your inner voice and welcome you on the voice journey. This is Kathy Beal, host of Celestial Compass, featuring astrology you can use. 
Celestial Compass points you to what's going on in the sky and what you can do with it down here on Earth. We also explore fun, effective, and cosmic tools for navigating this adventure we call life. Join me the first and third Monday of the month at 5 p.m. Eastern Time for Celestial Compass. It's enlightening, entertaining, and empowering. Coping 19, brought to you by CDC and the Ad Council. If you're feeling increasingly lonely right now, you're not alone. It's totally normal. Even though we may not be able to get together in person, connecting virtually with friends and family still gives you a chance to interact with people and may help raise your spirits. Join a virtual book club, set up group text chats, or online video coffee breaks with coworkers. Find more self-care and coping tips at coping-19.org. Welcome back to Voice Rising. I am your host, Cara Johnstad, and with me in studio is the singer, songwriter, vocal coach, community song leader, and author, Miss Barbara McAfee. And we're talking all about voice. Um, Barbara, the word voice, vocation, they share this common Latin root, vocare, which means literally to invoke or name or call. What did they know about the connection between voice and really coming into that true calling, our true purpose, that that connection? Oh, they just knew everything, Cara. (laughs) (laughs) They knew it all. They knew it all. And I, I, I am such a word geek, and I just love how the language reveals deeper meaning. And I've also been thinking about you know, how, well, I've, I've been thinking about vocation and vocare for a long time. Yes. Because how we get anything out of us in this world usually relies on giving it voice in some way, either in mm-hmm. writing or speaking. And this whole, our whole interview today is the results of a conversation with you and your sister. And then right. you came and visited our little choir one time when you were in town or yes, everything is is based on, a, hey, I have this idea, and then from there, something happens in the world, a family, a business, a, a song, a project. But if we don't give it voice, it will never happen. And that, that gets me up in the morning, because I know there are so many wounds in people's voices, and to open from the deepest inside out into the world is just, it's a brave thing. Mm-hmm. And if there's a block there and something doesn't happen that needs to happen. That just hurts my feelings. Um, but I've been expanding my etymological adventure with vocari, which yes. includes advocacy, which uses, means using your voice on behalf of something or someone you care about. It, it's invocation, which means literally to call spirit into the world through the vehicle of your voice. Mm-hmm. And pretty much any time the world is resonating with people's prayers and chants, invocations of the sacred at any, any given moment and constantly through time for a long, long time. And so uh, I, I just find it interesting how it all connects. It's fascinating. And we also say creating a sound world, a sound body. And mm-hmm. I didn't realize until I was doing some work for you know the show, in German we have the word gesund, which means health mm-hmm. but zunt mm-hmm. is sound we don't say we don't say this anymore we say um uh for health we say well i guess we say gesundheit but for sound we say mm-hmm. klang right but it's mm. it's interesting the original word is sound so health and yeah. sound was one word which yeah again they knew everything back then but we're remembering this right mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um we are remembering and remem- remembering has to do with our bodies our members are our, remembering is, is something about coming back into the body as well. As yeah. Etymologically. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. And well, you wrote this great book called full voice, mm-hmm. the art and practice of vocal presence, mm-hmm. where you really, you work with the five elements, share a little bit more what, what, your work is, what your vision is. I mean, it's about, of course, having people fully express their voice, but how do you 
allow these different elements. You you talk in the book about the wood element, the metal element. How does that support people to come into their full voice? Well, the elements that I use are earth, fire, earth, <laughs> earth fire, <Yeah>. water, <laughs> yes. metal, and air. I didn't include wood. All the Chinese medicine people tell me about wood, and then there's ether and I think there are more than five sounds, but five is a good start. Sounds and like you so, have a uh, uh, sequel coming, uh, the next yeah. one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Wood and Ether. Wood and Ether, the sequel. Um, but the idea is to expand, like I discovered in my first workshop with the Roy Hart teachers, is to expand into sound and exaggerate and isolate each of those five elements. Because these are just human sounds. They're elemental mm-hmm. to us. When we Mm -hmm. yawn in the morning, usually it's the earth voice. Mm -hmm. You know, the sounds that we make as human beings include these. These aren't special or different. And so each each of the elements correlates with certain human qualities, like earth is good for getting calm, more grounded, and projecting authority. No. And so they all have these different uh, human qualities that they help us express. So the idea is to sort of, break the voice apart like a prism breaks light apart into a rainbow and then reintegrating a more subtle version of each of those voices in your everyday life so that what you say and how you say it is coherent because a lot of us are sending mixed messages like no is a mixed message Mm -hmm. (laughs) or i'm sorry is a mixed message And when the words and the tone don't agree, the tone is going to be what people believe. And so the idea is to just open up more choices. And I work with people who are on a really big spiritual quest and want to just express themselves, you know, more fully in their lifetime. And then I also work with people who are in the world of work. I was a, I was a business consultant for 12 years. So I know how to Mm -hmm. walk in that world. And, I work with people who are leaders or emerging leaders who suddenly find themselves needing to coach people or give presentations in front of large groups or handle conflict differently. And so, or give, you know, I help people get ready for speeches. So it can be very practical and very transformational, but no matter where you enter in, you're going to get the other. You know, if you're looking for transformation, you're going to learn how to express yourself more effectively every day. And when you look for the practical, the transformational is just going to sneak up on you anyway, because what changes in your voice changes in your your life as well. And all these different sounds that even use different, we have so many very teeny tiny muscles in our Mm-hmm. in our throat, in our tongue. And I think it's easier to approach through different sound qualities than to mm-hmm. try to analyze, right? The Ari Epiglottic yes. sphincter muscle or whatever. It's just oh, easier oh, to say, yeah, you know, yeah. do do a yawn and feel mm-hmm. that low voice. Or, mm-hmm. And it's a, and also interesting with the tone. We have a, the mayor of Berlin actually um, is mm-hmm. wonderful. She's a, she's a woman who just got elected. Uh, but people are writing only about her voice because she had problems mm-hmm. with her voice and is now talking very high. So you don't feel mm-hmm. the voice in her body. So she's trying yeah. to save it and protect it. And we shouldn't have any dim- uh, discrimination based on voice quality. But it's interesting how, mm-hmm. because she doesn't have her voice placed lower in her body, people don't understand the tone when she's talking about uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, very important issues, right? So it's the tone confusing. is, yep. it's confusing. Like what you were saying, mm-hmm. it's confusing if somebody says, I'm sorry, and you're like, uh, mm-hmm. no, you're not. Yeah, but it, in the right <laughs> tone, and they don't realize it sometimes because that's their natural right. voice quality often. So the, they or don't understand. Or natural. It's, yes, it's not their natural one. It's just the one they've sort of cobbled together over yes, time. Yes, yes. You know, it's yeah. the little box they're living in, but. The little yeah. box they're living in. Yes. It's, I mean, yes, mm-hmm. it's good. You, the little you voice corrected box. me. Or their, their habits of maybe hearing. Mm-hmm. So, but, um, and that is the tragedy, right? The tragedy that, that so many people are misunderstood and they feel not mm-hmm. heard. 
because they're expressing using tones that they're not even they're not even conscious that they could do it differently and that's where your right. work is so important right i want yeah. to play another yeah, and, song yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah let's do that um i'm, sc- I'm scrolling wait, 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 wait i'm trying to scroll I, I want to play this song i have so many questions for you barbara oh world of wonders world oh, of wonders. Like it's such one. a beautiful that's song. like my it's my manifesto it's like just basically a song that expresses pretty much everything i stand for yeah should we just listen to it people will Uh, listen listen to to the lyrics let's listen to it world of (laughs) wonders and then after that we can talk about it great Here's a breath to help ease your breathing A song to set your songs free Here is a voice that will just keep on singing A vision for who we could be There is bread for all a refuge when trouble draws near The hate melting to kindness Injustice eclipsing the fear these lines, Barbara, that you wrote, the hate melting to mm. kindness and justice eclipsing the fear. You're very active in community. Um, mm-hmm. when, when did it shift for you from your own soul healing to doing the collective healing, the collective uh, healing of community? Well, it's been kind of leapfrogging together I, I, because I was raised, I'm a, like, I call myself like a fourth generation song leader. My brother's only seven years older than I am, but I watched him very closely and he was a choir director. My mom was a choir director. My grandfather was a choir director. And I grew up just knowing in my bones that people need to sing together, whether they feel qualified or not. Mm-hmm. And so 
this was a little while ago, I realized, oh my gosh, I'm, I think I'm the matriarch of community, oral tradition community <laughs> singing in the, twin, in the Twin Cities area in Minnesota. I was like, oh my gosh, I just have been at it for a long time. Just no music to read, no training. I just say, here, you sing this part, boom. And then you sing this part, boom. And I can get people singing three or four part harmony and they don't need to know a thing about what they're doing. Mm-hmm. But they get that pleasure that I grew up with in choirs. And yeah. I think there's something that we can access singing together that we can't access any other way. And I don't think that should be just for people who have training and think they have a good voice. Heaven forbid. Most, most humans throughout time have been doing this just to get through their day. You know, most of us right. are here because our ancestors survived. And one of the ways they did that was they sang to digest their experiences and and remember their connections. So, so I kept, you know, I would do my work and then I would do get people singing together. And over time that just grew and grew. And before the pandemic, I would get about 50 to 60 people in a room to sing this way for a couple of hours, all ages, all abilities. And um, it was some of the best work I did. And then I started also composing songs for people to, you know, I collected a bunch of them from my, my friends. There's a huge movement. Um, there was, there still is. It's just, it's just different now because of COVID, but there's a huge movement um, in the U S and Canada, particularly, I know there's some in the UK too, about um, oral tradition, this kind of oral tradition singing. Um, yeah, and, we yeah. actually, I have a very small group here in Berlin, and we luckily also sing um, some of your songs that are Aww. to be found. Jewels, every oh, yeah. time I go into the darkness, which you have written, and once in a while, mm-hmm. um, which other beautiful song that was inspired, I think, by Leonard Cohen about There's a Crack. Mm. Um, forget your perfect offering. Oh, I don't. I don't. That's not mine. You don't do I that anymore. It. Oh, okay. Yeah. You I teach, teach it. Like, I used to open it, open my song circles with that. Um, See, we need we need to yeah. learn. We need to learn more. But I do believe that your songs are available for people mm-hmm. that want to. Number one, learn them together with you once this COVID craziness is over to come, but also mm-hmm. even on um, streaming platforms and on your albums. You mm-hmm. can, Jules, I mm-hmm. believe, is on one of your, your yes, albums, right? It is. As, and it's, yeah, a, it's, it's a very yeah. beautiful song. Exactly. Barbara, we Thank need to you. take a very short break and then okay. we're going to come back. Perfect. Bringing a more conscious lifestyle to your world. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Ascending Hearts is no ordinary dating site, but a spiritual dating site with a purpose to link you with your soulmate. We engineer the serendipity so you can trust that you will attune with someone that has the same matching vibration as you. Ascending Hearts, the conscious dating site for the spiritually aware. Try Ascending Hearts for free, ascendinghearts.com. My name is Victor Furman. Some call me The Voice. I've always been fascinated with human nature, spirituality, science, and the crossroads at which they meet. Join me Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern on Ohm Times Radio, and we'll explore these topics and so much more on Destination Unlimited. The United States has the highest rate of incarceration in the world. At the Equal Justice Initiative, we believe mass incarceration has to end. There is this presumption of dangerousness and guilt that gets assigned to black and brown people. We have to confront our history of racial injustice and commit to a new era of truth. There's something better waiting for us, something that feels more like freedom. Truth can inspire change. Please learn more at EJI.org. Welcome back. 
Welcome back to Voice Rising. I am your host, Cara Johnson, and with me in studio today is Barbara McAfee, and we're talking about all things voice, and Barbara's sharing her journey, not only as a singer, performer, singer-songwriter, community leader, author, and you are sharing also that you not only help people on the spiritual journey to midwife their their voices, I mean, you, you you are the midwife giving birth to their their voice into this world, their full voice. Um, and you also work, of course, with business leaders. How do you midwife a voice into the world? Is it messy, just like a, oh, a gotcha. real birth? <laughs> <laughs> it can be. Once in a while, be. somebody kind of comes and, I mean, I have, I do have a friend who had an ecstatic birth. I mean, yeah. it was just like hardly any pain, and she just mostly it was the most ecstatic experience of her life. But once, so once in a while, we have one of those. I just had a, a person, a woman who, you know, she was a small Asian woman, and she was always like the youngest and smallest person at the table, often the only female. So everything was like ar, 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 in her voice, and her voice was tired, and she was tired. Yeah. And yeah. So she was pretty ready to go. And so we, I had her kind of move from her earth and fire a little bit more up into her water. And mm-hmm. she started noticing that her uh, colleagues who were so resistant to her ideas suddenly were, she, she, she said, Barbara, it wasn't the ideas. It was my, mm-hmm. my delivery of the ideas. Yeah. And, they, and, and her husband also said, you know, there's just a lot more space around our house now that you're, you're moving. And, and it wasn't fakey. I mean, this is part of, you know, that's the biggest barrier is usually people think, oh, this is so inauthentic. But she actually played with it enough that her kind of identity started to shift and she started to actually feel like, oh, ah, what a relief to just not have to stomp around in the world as a warrior all the time um, to be able to choose when she takes that on. But but a lot That's of a, times there's just a lot of tears and, uh, and a lot of negotiations at a deep level, you know, yeah. just to say, really, I, I can be, I can be like this. And I use characters a lot. I use make believe mm-hmm. a lot because it mm-hmm. sneaks up on that identity. So I yeah. might not be able to make a sound, but Julia Child can do it or Luciano Pavarazzi, you know, or, yeah. or, or a wolf howl or somebody, somebody can make that sound. So. I always have the feeling that when people get really aligned with their big full voice, there is a memory that is activated when they were children and highly creative. It just yes. it seems like the tears come also because there's a deep memory of feeling free and creative and playing with sounds and squealing and laughing and and that is that's so deep in ourselves that we yeah that we we get our creativity gets unleashed at the same time as does our imagination and like when you were talking I thought my god how many divorces have there been because mm-hmm. maybe again the tone was too harsh for what that person was actually trying to say, or they just didn't know how to take a deeper breath. It's so tragic, right? right? They fall in love and have children. And because the voice is so tight, um, nobody wants to come close to them. It's crazy. It's true. And I, I did work, I have worked back when I worked with people in person. I've done this work with couples. Yeah. And it's very interesting to see like what elements are dominant for which people, which ones they have in common and which ones are different. Mm-hmm. Um, I could actually still do that on Zoom. I just haven't had the opportunity. You know, I've been doing yeah. all my work on Zoom and it works amazingly well. But just, it's very interesting for them to sort of, because communication is the number one issue between any human beings. It's yes. in every work team I ever worked with in my 12 years as a consultant, the number one issue they always talked about was communication. And so much of it is around how you're saying it. Yes. And that's the same is true in, in family relationships. Don't use that tone with me. Um, mm-hmm. 
And so to be able to be more conscious about not just how you speak, but how you listen to, oh, and we all do that anyway. Uh, You know, people who know you well, if you're having a bad day and you pick up the phone and say, hello, your sister will know if you're having a bad day just by the tone of your voice. But how? But if you do... have like a decoder, you know, if you have a way to sort of decode and be more conscious about listening and speaking, it can make a big difference. I was going to ask that tricky question. On the one hand, we want to feel really free and liberated. At the same time, we're tapping into our awareness of using the right tone. Sometimes when we are about to speak our mind and take those big risks and finally say, I really don't feel comfortable with this, or as you know, in the United States there's, uh, and everywhere, I mean, in Europe too, there's also a lot of divisiveness so people don't even mm. trust feeling freer with their voice. It's, it just seems very complex. Um, what do you do with all those critical voices that are telling us, yeah, go for it. Uh, share your emotions, mm. no matter how they come mm. out. Let the mm. voice f- mm. wild and free. And at the same time, like, hey, you have to be compassionate, not hurt anybody, use the right tone, otherwise you're going to be misunderstood. How, how do you, mm. how do you uh, help us to be liberated mm. and conscious at the same time? <laughs> liberated oh, and great conscious question. at a, the same it's time. It's a great question. Great question to live right in smack in the middle of until we're all dead, right? Yeah. Um, here's the thing. I, the, the critical piece for me is the connection. Mm -hmm. So should, for instance, your lovely mayor, should she be able to talk any darn way she wants to and be credible? Yes. Is she getting grief because she's female and she's talking in a high voice? Yes. Is that fair? No. Mm -hmm. However, if we want to make a connection with other human beings, that's, that's the, that's it right there. Right. So if you keep push, like if you come at somebody with a lot of fire and a lot of energy and you see them backing away Mm -hmm. their body language, you know, they're folding arms, legs and looking for other things to fold. (laughs) Yes. Um, You're losing the connection and then nothing can happen. Yes. And so there are people that you may be able to say, oh, that's fine. You know, if I'm connected to you or I'm not, it's not critical. But if we want anything to happen with that person, In order for anything to happen, we have to have a connection. So if the fire is not working, then we might go into some water and say, oh, does this work better? Like my client I just told you about. Does this this open more doors? And if you have all of these qualities, you know, you've all identified all these qualities as yourself. These are all you. You're not faking anything. Mm -hmm. You have a lot more choices. And especially when we're working across culture. You know, working more globally, um, the last seven of my individual clients have all been immigrants or the daughters of immigrants. And I don't even know how that happened. They came from all different parts of the world, and they have very different agendas that they want. Um, and they're from very different places mm-hmm. um, in the world. But I thought that was interesting. So, so for them, how do they neg- negotiate cultural difference? Anyway, I think the, it's, the key it's also is interesting. You, be, yeah, yeah, it's also Go interesting ahead. because every le, every culture, it's not only the words that we say. It's not only putting it into Deepl or into Google Translator and get the direct translation. Every mm-hmm. language also has a register or a range, and so maybe okay. in their in their home countries. I mean, we know that. I mean, in Europe, for example, in, in Switzerland, they're, they're singing all the time because they're, you know, it's a mountain people. Um, but in when you go up north, it's it's lower, it's flatter, it's mm-hmm. it, there's not as much, you know, da, 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 sing song, right? Yes. Yeah. And if they sing yeah. song in a meeting, they might again not that they shouldn't be themselves, but they might not be really take they, they might not be understood. And in the end, we all want to be heard and understood. Um, Mm -hmm. I want to really quickly just get into this last song, Brain Rats, which is about, (laughs) I believe, the harsh inner critics that can happen when we do Mm -hmm. step into our full voice or full power, step into the light, 
start risking a little bit more. Um, yeah, should we just listen to it, or would you like to say a couple of words before oh, I, we? Let's just listen. Let's just listen. Let's just to listen. It. It, okay, great so title. Yeah. Great title. <laughs> Brain rats. Here we go. <laughs> And every hopeful notion gives them something new to gnaw I hear them chewing in the night And on and off all day They've really got my number All the awful stuff they say says she loves me but no doubt she's telling lies and friends are all just enemies in ingenious disguise there's no one to be trusted and that's including me the best approach to human beings is fierce misanthropy And late at night I count my debts as I fret and toss and turn I'm one step from the poorhouse, I can't make it on my own I'll be just like that match girl dying cold and all alone with such cunning like little Marquise de Sade they wreak unstinting havoc beneath my cool facade they tell me I'm worse than everyone my problems can't be solved and I'm the piece of crap around which this whole world revolves brain rats I've got brain Brain Rats by Barbara <laughs> McAfee. She's with me here today. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah, just the thought yep. of it makes me a little bit, uh, yeah, it's just the thought of those brain rats. It makes makes me a little bit crazy. Like just the thought of it. Well, I mean, you think yeah. of ratty, tangled hair, but just, yeah, it's, um, Barbara, you talked about the beauty before the COVID time, the beauty of unity consciousness, the beauty of mm -hmm. gathering people from all cultures and young and old and, you know, gender fluidity, male, female, kids, grandmas mm -hmm. in a room, and the magic of singing together, not thinking about, you know, really the opinions of the political opinions, just being human in that room, the humanity of that moment. Mm -hmm. um, what what are the golden nuggets that you would love to share about voice in these last one or two moments that you've mm -hmm. learned and that where you'd like to see us move towards in 2022? Well, I think the uh, there's so many things. One thing is that if if you can make a sound, it's not an accident. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like the way we, it's good for us to stretch and move physically. It's good for us to stretch and move vocally. Mm -hmm. um, past speaking, past singing into sound, to be playful with the voices you were talking about, like children. Um, makes funny noises <laughs> all the time. Yeah. Yeah. And then... And then also, I, I mean, this has been a, such a lonely time for so many people. And 
so many of my community song people have been just in deep grief because we've gotten used to this antidote to loneliness and self-absorption. It's, there's so few opportunities for us to lose ourselves in the collective in a way that feels nourishing. And mm-hmm. to not be able to sing together now when we've gotten so used to it um, has been just a huge grief. We have Zoom singing, but you can't sing together on Zoom, so it's not exactly the thing. Yeah. So to me, I think when, this, when it's safer to do so, to, to gather friends in your living room and just sing songs from your childhood, or I have a bunch of my, I'm going to be recording more of my community songs. Beautiful. Um, there's a bunch of them on my website at barbaramcafee.com under community songs, and I'm going to go into the studio in a couple weeks and record a whole bunch more. Um, and there's a lot of resources out there for community singing, just available um, simple thing. So to me, it's just encouraging people to sing, make noise, alone and together. Um, yeah, while, while we're still living, why not? While we're still living, why, why not? not? Good vibes, good vibes, vibrant health. Um, BarbaraMcAfee.com. Yep. I thank you so much for being with me today. For those of you out there, she also has a great book, Full Voice, The Full Voice, and I wish you much success and joy. Mm, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you.